Hey there, Tim Warner from CBT Nuggets here. Welcome to this CBT Nuggets micro nugget on Task Manager in Windows Server 2012. You probably are familiar with Task Manager, right? This is a graphical process and service management tool that's been in Windows for a very long time, actually. It goes all the way back to Windows 3.11, if you can believe it. Microsoft hasn't really tweaked Task Manager significantly up to now. In Windows Server 2012, it appears to me that Microsoft has inherited much functionality from the SysInternals Process Explorer tool that is freely available from the Microsoft website. You'll see that in the demo in just a moment. We use Task Manager as Windows Systems Administrators, generally speaking, for the following reasons. To kill stuck programs, to identify malware or suspicious processes, and for performance tuning. We want to see what services, what processes, and now which users are consuming too many resources on our system. Let's hop into the demo and I'll show you how the new Task Manager works in Windows Server 2012. We can open up Task Manager in a number of ways. Fortunately, all of the ways that we're used to using in previous version of Windows still exist here in Windows Server 2012. We can use Control Shift Escape if you're a keyboard based person. Alternatively we can right click an unused area of the taskbar and select Task Manager, or if we're in a command prompt or PowerShell environment, we can type T-A-S-K-M-G-R, either upper or lower case, it doesn't matter, to open up the new Task Manager. Now just as a side note, I found this interesting. In using the Windows Server 8 beta quite heavily, I found that using Task MGR from a command line or PowerShell prompt opened the old Task Manager that we have in Windows Server 2008. It looks like in the Windows Server 2012 release candidate, Microsoft has has in fact fully removed the old task manager and gives us just this one. Just a little bit of trivia for you to consider. Now notice the minimalist interface you see here. This is a big departure from the traditional task manager that we're used to seeing. We see by default a list of running foreground applications. On my case I have notepad, server manager, and PowerShell running. If I select one of these processes it might be not responding or stuck. I can end it with just a single click of the mouse and that's all she wrote. If I right click, I can switch to the task, I can end it, I can start a new task, etc. Check this out though. Open file location and search online. Those are really nifty items that have been carried over, I believe, from the SysInternals Process Explorer tool that Microsoft makes available on the SysInternals.com domain. If we click more details, this significantly expands the screen. Chances are on a daily basis, you're going to want to run in this mode. Now, quick overview of what we've got going on roll-ups of CPU and memory. Just with a single click, we can do inverse sorts like we're used to, not just seeing relative values for CPU and memory, but overall. I think that's really cool. Also, these processes are expandable and they reveal what's inside them. The old service host.exe is now drillable, where we can go in and see exactly what's associated with those umbrella processes. If we right-click one, we can go to the service control manager with a single click or again search your default search engine for that item. If we go over to the performance tab, Microsoft did a good job of simplifying the view here, giving us just the metrics that administrators we really most care about, and there's a link to open the resource monitor console if you want to do that. The users tab is particularly important for multi-tenancy environments, that is if you're using terminal services or as Microsoft now calls it, remote desktop services and virtualization infrastructures, you may have more than one user logged on to your machine. You can see at a glance how much in terms of resources each of those users is consuming. The details tab gives us, well, more details about all running processes on the system. If you right click one of those bad boys, you can do traditional stuff like dumping the task, ending the entire tree of associated processes, changing runtime priority for multiprocessor systems, setting processor affinity. But again, check this out. The fact that you can open the Windows Explorer file location for any process you see in Task Manager is awfully useful when you want to track down and resolve suspected malware. These tabs are generally all interconnected. You can bounce back and forth by using the right click menu. The services tab gives you a quick rundown of all of the services active on that system. It shows their run state, whether they're stopped or running. 
When you right click a service, you can easily bounce the service or restart it. If it stopped, you can start it. However, if you want to change the logon account or change the startup type of the service, you'll actually need to use the open services command from the shortcut menu, and that will take us to the good old fashioned services control manager. So that's the new task manager in a nutshell. Let me click fewer details to give you again that ultra minimalistic view. So that concludes this micro nugget. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.